Joining us now to break down the day's top headlines and the latest moves by the Trump campaign is Paris Denard, a GOP commentator and the senior communications advisor for Black Media Affairs for the Republican National Committee. So, Paris, this week, a lot of moving parts, as usual, regarding court battles, regarding the upcoming Senate runoffs. But I do want to start with the presidential election. What is the latest moves by the RNC regarding those efforts? Well, at the RNC, we are focused on the integrity of the election. We feel that there are multiple instances where there are voter irregularities, potential for fraud, and document thousands of uh, affidavits where people have come forward to give their testimony, their witness, uh, their proof, their evidence of problems with the election system. And so we owe it to the American people to carry out what we started months ago with our website, protectthevote.com. People were wondering, why is the RNC investing so much in protectthevote.com and these efforts and these lawsuits? It's because we knew then, under the leadership of Ronna McDaniel, our chairwoman, that there was going to be problems with a, a system that was totally new, which was this mail and ballot system, where we didn't have the valid uh, process of signature checks and, and just mailing ballots to people. I know personally, people that were received multiple ballots at their home addresses across this country. And so we are going to continue to fight like we've been doing in the court system and providing uh, the resources to do so nationwide, thanks to all of the donors who are going to GOP.com and donating because they understand and see the problems in this election uh, cycle right now. And we talk about the affidavits that are coming in, all the evidence, for example, that has been reported of instances of voter fraud in these select states that are going to be so important when it comes to this recount effort, when it comes to challenging them in courts, things of that nature, because it's a difficult job to go through all of these states, audit all of these different allegations, for example, in such a short amount of time. I know that you guys are expediting this process because you want to get it taken care of before these votes are certified, before the inauguration, of course. So is there a timeline that you guys are on right now? in order to make sure that you execute all of these responsibilities by a certain time period? Well, what we do know is that the media is trying to rush this election through, jam it down our throats and say, accept what we tell you, this is who the winner is, this is who the losers are. But we're not accepting that because the media doesn't certify the elections. If you go back to uh, the election of George W. Bush, we know that he wasn't, uh, that election wasn't decided until December I believe December the 11th, some over 30 days that it took to get to that one decision, focus on just one state and one particular county. And so what we have now is multiple examples of voter regularities, problems, voting machines, discrepancies, and all of these affidavits. So we think that it deserves the patience that it, take, that it took back then, that we should exercise now. And we obviously want to get this done before the uh, Electoral College has to meet in December. Uh, but we're going to do this in a fashion that is not rushed, but in a fashion that is right and that is just and transparent. And yesterday, for example, on the Senate floor, uh, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said that 70 percent of Republicans have questions about this election. And I don't care where you stand politically. That's a bad thing for a democracy. We should be able to audit those types of things. The American people should have faith in our election system, because if they don't, then what's the point of moving forward to begin with? And I feel like any substantive change can only happen with control of the Senate. And a lot of people are now looking ahead to the Georgia runoffs, hoping uh, for Republicans, for example, that they can have control. Democrats see that as an opportunity for them to control all the chambers in Washington right now, the White House all the way down to the House of Representatives. What is the first step that goes into preparing for a runoff election as we look ahead to Georgia? Well, the Georgia election is very important. We have two uh, people down there who had... Uh, if they had been in any other state, would be the sitting United States senators today. But because of Georgia law, getting the 50 plus percent uh, in the vote, they have to go to a, re a recount. Uh, so uh, we a runoff. And so what we're seeing now is the RNC has over a thousand uh, volunteers that are down there in all of the major canvassing areas. Uh, we have people there to monitor. We have lawyers that are there to to make sure that this is a transparent. A transaction. What we also know is we want it to be transparent because some of the things that are being proposed in terms of uh, how this recount is going to happen uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that transparent. Uh, we know Stacey Abrams, who I think still believes that she's governor of Georgia, has been leading these efforts to thwart 
uh, the, the will of the people and by saying that there's been so many instances of voter suppression, fraud, and all these things for, for many years now. But all of a sudden now in 2020, everything is perfect, everything is great. No, if those things were true, now let's see how, tr let's see, let's get to the bottom and have it in a just manner. And so there are problems with how the, the, the recount is going to be done. And so we've voiced our concerns, uh, especially on the issues of transparency. But we have a mighty force, a great number of volunteers and lawyers that are going to be down there to make sure that it is done properly. And I'm glad to bring up Stacey Abrams because I think it's a little bit hypocritical when we're talking about Democrats calling on the president con to concede this race. And meanwhile, I'm not sure if Stacey Abrams has conceded her 2018 gubernatorial race to this day. So uh, I'm not necessarily here to hear the arguments about why President Trump should concede for the sake of democracy when, when nobody's recognized that fact. But Paris Denard, it's always a pleasure having you on the program. Thanks for updating us on where the RNC stands right now. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure.